In this video, we are speaking about proofs and propositional logic. Remember, propositional logic is about a series of statements that in an argument lead to a conclusion. How do we know such an argument is valid? We are testing arguments for validity. The easiest way is to look for an invalid argument, and this brings us to a vital definition. An argument is invalid if there is any row, any row at all, where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. We could use truth tables to test for validity. However, it will be easier to develop some laws, some rules to ascertain the truth of an argument. So let's test for the validity of a simple argument. A, A implies B, therefore B. And let's make a simple truth table for this argument. So we have all four possibilities. A is true, B is true, A is true, B is false, A is false, B is true, A is false, B is false. Now notice there's no row where the premises are all true and the conclusion is false. In row two, the conclusion is false, but so is the second premise. In row four, the conclusion is false, but so is the first premise. Therefore, the argument is valid, and this is an argument known as a modus ponens. We have our first rule, modus ponens. If A implies B and A is true, then B has to be true. For example, if it is raining implies that the ground is wet, and it is raining, then the ground is wet. We could use modus ponens for proofs. And again, modus ponens says A, A implies B, therefore B. Now let's look at an example of an invalid proof. This is particular one is called affirming the consequent. A implies B, B, therefore A. For example, if it rains, the ground will be wet. The ground is wet, therefore it is raining. It's an invalid proof. Maybe the ground is wet because sprinklers are running. So let's look at a truth table. The same lines. Note row three. The premises are true, but the conclusion is false. Therefore, the argument is invalid. You cannot affirm the consequent as a true proof. Now, let's look at a second rule known as modus tollens. A implies B, not B, therefore not A. If it rains, then the ground is wet. The ground is not wet, therefore it is not raining. And again, let's bring a uh, proof using truth tables. Now you notice that rows one and two, the conclusion is false. In row one, the second premise is false. In row two, the first premise is false. Therefore, there's no row at all where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Modus tollens is valid. So we have two valid rules now we could use for our proofs. Modus ponens, A, A implies B, therefore B. Modus tollens, A implies B, not B, therefore not A. Now here's some other rules. We'll mention them without proving them, but you can prove each and every one of them using truth tables. And if you think about them, they will be obvious. There's the disjunctive syllogism. It's also sometimes called or elimination. A or B, not A, therefore B. If either A or B is true and A is not true, then it's clear that B must be true. Simplification, also called and elimination. A and B, therefore A. If and, A and B together are true, then A by itself is true. And by the way, so is B by itself true. Introduction, also called and introduction. A, B, therefore A and B. <laughs> if A is true, B is true, then A and B combined is true. Addition, also called or introduction. A implies A or B. If A is true, then A or anything else is true. If it's raining outside, if that's true, then it's raining outside or the moon is made of green cheese also has to be true. Anything added to a true statement is true. Hypothetical syllogism. A implies B, B implies C, therefore A implies C. It's a chain of implications, A implies C. And a constructive dilemma. If A implies B and C implies D, and we know that A or C 
is true, then B or D must be true. One of those implications must follow through. Finally, we have what's known as a double negative, not, not A. If it's not true that A is not true, then A has to be true. And with these rules, we are ready to prove the validity of many different kinds of arguments.